Welcome to today's lesson of identifying the elements of a plot diagram. Today we're going to discuss how to identify the elements of a plot diagram within a short story. There are going to be two different metaphors to a plot diagram that we're going to introduce during this lesson. The first is um, comparing a roller coaster to the plot diagram. How many of you have ridden on a roller coaster before? Right when you get on, at the very beginning, you get into the car and there's all this anticipation and all this fear of what's to come because you can't see over that, that first hill. So as you get into the car and it starts to slowly creep up the first hill, you have all this anticipation and all this fear of what's to come because you can't see over that hill and you don't know what you, what you have in front of you. So that is the beginning of the roller coaster ride that can be correlated with the exposition of the plot diagram. The next and the rising action. The next part of the roller coaster ride is when you reach the top of the very first hill. The top of the very first hill you get a split second glance of what what's to come so you kind of have this relief because you now can see what's coming in front of you but right in that split second when they when when you can see what's in front of you you then go super fast and it's over before you know it and so that split second or the peak of the roller coaster ride can be known as the climax of the story So again, here you've got the beginning, which you have your anticipation, fear of the unknown, then you've got the peak, and right as you hit that peak, next thing you know it, you're gone, and it's the end of the roller coaster ride. The end of the roller coaster ride, your emotions, you feel like you're calm again and you're coming back to earth, this can be correlated to the resolution of the story. So the second metaphor for a plot diagram that's often used is a mountain, that a plot diagram is like a mountain. Um, when you first start up your hike, you can see you're a little nervous because maybe you're climbing Camelback and you've got this steep hill in front of you. So as you're starting to climb it, you're not as nervous because you're getting closer to the top. And then once you, once you reach the top, you can see everything and all you have left to do is go down, which is the easiest part. So we are going to have Bob, the hiker, join us on our journey today, and he's going to help explain how the plot diagram can be like a mountain to us. So the definition of a plot is the organized pattern or sequence of events that make up a story. Every plot is made up of a series of incidences that are related to one another, kind of like a puzzle. You have a bunch of pieces that fit together perfectly to make the story. The first part of the plot diagram is the exposition. This usually occurs at the beginning of a story. Here the characters are introduced as well as the setting is introduced. Most importantly, we're introduced to the main conflict or the main problem that the characters will face. The inciting incident also occurs during the exposition. It's the event that starts the action in the story. So Bob is starting his hike with the exposition. He's then going to move to the rising action. The rising action is the part of the story that begins the conflict. It starts to, the, the conflict starts to develop in the rising action. It can be a series of anywhere from five to 20 events that occur, but those events create a building interest or a suspense that take you to the next step of the plot diagram, which is the climax. The climax is the turning point of the story. Usually the main character comes face to face with some sort of conflict during the climax. The main character will change in some way when they are faced with this climax. So there we are, Bob is at the top of the mountain. He can take a sigh of relief because all he has left now is to go down the hill, as do we in the falling action, which is the next part of the plot diagram. During the falling action, all loose ends of the plot are tied up. 
the conflicts and climax are taken care of. So we no longer have that anticipation building. We know what has happened. So now all we need is some sort of resolution, which is the very last part of the plot diagram. The resolution is where the story comes to a reasonable ending and all of those loose ends, we now know how they're tied up and why. So we discuss the climax, which is a conflict. So part of today's lesson is going to be talking about different types of conflict as well that different characters can face. But before we do that, we're gonna put it all together. So the plot diagram, you have exposition and rising action. Those two put together are the beginning of the story. The middle of the story is the climax and the end of the story contain the falling action and the resolution. So here we have Bob taking us on that, that journey once more. You have the exposition, which is number one and includes the inciting incident. Then you have the rising action, which is number two. The climax, which is number three. The falling action, which is number four. And the resolution, which is number five. Now we're gonna discuss different types of conflict. So there are two different types of conflicts. There are internal conflicts and external conflicts. The first we're going to discuss is internal conflict. But first, what is conflict? Conflict is a problem in the story which triggers the action. So the first and only type of internal conflict is man versus self. This is when a character struggles inside himself with decisions. The second type of conflict is external conflict. There are several different types of external conflict. The first is man versus man. Character has a problem with one or more other characters. So this is when they get in a fight with maybe another character. Man versus society is when character has a problem with school, law, or tradition. So they have a problem or issue with someone in society or with society itself. The next is man versus nature, where a character has a problem with something in nature, a blizzard, an avalanche, a flood, etc. And then the last is man versus fate. Man versus fate is when a character has to battle what seems to be an uncontrollable problem. So whatever their fate or destiny should be. Many of you have seen Final Destination and that would be an example of man versus fate. That is the end of tonight's lesson. Don't forget that you need to make sure to take down your two column notes. After you take down your two column notes, you need to summarize what you've learned in today's lesson. And then the last thing that you need to do is come up with higher level thinking questions to ask tomorrow in class. Have a wonderful evening.